Right, well, scatter diagrams um, are pretty common questions, um, and they're used to look for relationships between two sets of variables. So you can see here in this first question, we're looking for uh, any relationship between the marks that um, students get in coursework and what they get in their written papers. So each of these is a coordinate pair that we plot on the graph. So the first one, the coursework marks are going across in this direction and the written marks are vertical. Um, and we can see here that the scale is going up 10 little squares for five jumps. So that means that each little square is going to be half a unit in that direction. And in this direction, each little square, we've got 20, 0 to 20 and 10 jumps. Each little square is two units. So 5, 22 will be there and then one square above 20. And mark the points with a cross rather than a dot. 30, 120. Well, there's 30, there's 120. As usual with graph paper, it's going to be easier for you on the full graph than it is on this photocopy. So there's that one. Put a little tick under it so you know you've plotted it. 1564. Well, there's 15, 64, 60, 62, 64. 44, 86. So 44 is going to be two squares in from 45 and 186 is going to be 180, 2, 4, 6 there. 9, 17. 9 will be 2 squares in from 10. 17 will be um, 1 and a half down from 20. That will be there. 22, 76. 22 will be 20 one, two, three, four squares and 76 will be two down from 80 39, 143 39 will be two in from 40 143 140 142, 144, there. 26, 112. 25, so we've got two squares in from 25. And 112 will be... Um, 112, 120, 18, 16, 14, 12. There. 33, 148. 31, 35, 34, 33 will be there, and 148, 140, 2, 4, 6, 8 will be there, and 27, 92, 25, 26, 27, and 92 will be 100, 2, Four, six, eight, ninety-two will be there. So those are your points plotted. Now, what type of correlation does your scatter diagram show? Um, if you've got a correlation where as one set of data increases, so does the other, then you've got a sort of scatter which is going upwards like that, then the correlation is positive. So you write positive. If as one was increasing the other was decreasing that would be negative and if the scatter points were all over the place then it would be no correlation. Okay we're going to draw a line of best fit now. Sometimes you'll be given the mean points to draw that line of best fit. If you're given the mean points then you plot that and the line of best fit goes through it. If you're not given this information then you just draw your line so it follows the trend of the points that you've got. But here we're given that the mean coursework mark for pupils is 25 and the mean written is 98. 
so we put that point on 25 is here and 98 will be there and we mark that in in a different way to show that that isn't actual data that's what the averages are so the line of best fit has to go through there and it follows the general gradient or steepness of the graph that we've got so that kind of point would be a good line of best fit and we don't tend to take the line of best fit beyond the furthest limits of our data because we don't know what happens beyond those points right then the final part is usually using that so another pupil completed the coursework and was given a mark of 19 but was absent from the written paper uh, examination use your line of best fit to estimate the mark so what we do is we use the line of best fit we find 19 on the coursework which is there and it's well worth in the exam you marking this onto your graph so you're showing the examiner that you know what you're doing so that's 19 so that would tell us that we're expecting a test mark of 62 4 6 8 70 okay so you're using the best line the best fit going into the line with the mark you know and reading off the line to estimate the result Okay, question two. So the same again, we start off plotting this case mileages. We've got mileage across the bottom, price moving vertically. So we've got a mileage of 8,000. Um, we're going from 0 to 10,000 in 10 squares. So each little square going in this way is 1,000. And each little square going this way is going to be 100. So 8,000 will be 2 in there, and 7,300, so if I line that up with my 8,000, um, 7,300 will be 1, 2, 3, there, a tick, 15,000 will be there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5,000 is there, 25,000, 3,900, 25,000, 3,900, 22,000, 5,500, 34,000, 4,000, 2,000, 6,000, 40,000, 2,000, 46,000, 2,300. So those are those points. What type of correlation does this scatter diagram show? Well, as I mentioned earlier, if as one variable increases, the other decreases. So as the mileage goes up, the value goes down, that's negative correlation. Again, in this question, they're giving us the mean information. The mean mileage is 24,000. The mean price is 4,500. So 24,000 is there. And 4,500 is there. Mark that differently. So my line is going to go through that point and be in the same kind of steepness as the graph. That should do it. So that's my line of best fit. And now I estimate the price of a second hand car that had a mileage of 30,000. So 30,000 is there. So I'm going to estimate from my graph.
that that's going to be a value of 3,000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3,700 pounds. Now if your line is slightly different angle to that, then you'll get a slightly different value, but um, that will be within an acceptable range and you'll still get the mark. So that's a negative correlation. Question three. Um, so this time the relationship that we're looking at is linking eight people uh, and their mass before the diet and the mass after the diet. So let's take a look at the axes. We're going up from 50 to 60 in 10 jumps. So we're going to go one for every square in that direction and the same in this direction. So it's going to be one, each little square is one unit or one kilogram. So the mass before the diet is 130, 130 is there, mass after the diet is 112, 112 is there. 50, 51, mass before 50, mass after 51, 75, 61, 75 is there, 61 is there, 93, 83, 93, 83 is there, 112 is there, 92 is there, 60 68 is there. Oh, done this wrong, haven't I? So that should have been 68, 60. Sorry, that one's wrong. 68, 60 is there. Sixty-one forty-nine. Sixty-one across forty-nine is there and 83 68 83 is there 68 is there okay so what type of correlation does our scatter diagram show as one increases so does the other so it's positive the mean of the eight people before the diet was 84 is there, after was 72, which is there, so there's our mean point, draw the line of best fit, so it's going to go through there, and it's going to be a uh, similar kind of slope, so it's going to look something like that, and then use your line of best fit to estimate the mass after the diet for a person whose mass before it was 95. So 95 is there. So coming off 95 and reading along in the other direction, 80 kilograms would be my estimate. And the final question on scattered diagrams. Right, this time we've got engine capacity and acceleration time um, for certain car for certain speeds of eight cars. Now this time I need to turn the graph around this way. Let's just see what ha what's happening to the scale. So we're going 1,000 to 1,100 in 10. So that's going up in tens. 1,000. And 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 11, 100. So we're going up in jumps of 10 in that direction. And in this direction, we're going to go up 2, um, 2 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, 3, 3.2, 3.4, 3.6, 3.84. So these are going up in 0.2s. Okay, so I'm going to keep the graph this way around and um, read off the top, which is kicking off the screen. The first one has got a capacity of a thousand and an acceleration of 
15.4 so a thousand is there 15.4 will be three squares down from 16 Oh, excuse me. Um, then I'm going to go 1114. 1100 is there. 14 is there. 1213.4. 1213.4 is going to be three squares down from 14. 1300. 11.4 1300 11.4 is going to be 3 squares down from 12 1400 11.8 1400 11.8 is going to be 1 square down from 12 1600 9.1 1. 10 one, two, three, four, and a bit squares. Eighteen hundred is six point nine. So it's going to be six, two, four, six, eight, nine, and two thousand is six, which is there. So that's the scatter graph. Part B, what type of correlation does your scatter diagram show? Well again, as the engine capacity is increasing, the acceleration time is decreasing, it's going down, so it's negative correlation. So I just spin that around. The mean engine capacity is 14.25, mean acceleration is 11. So mean engine capacity of 14.25, will be 14, 10, 25, halfway through there. And um, the acceleration is 11, which is halfway there. So there's my mean point. I would say that there is fairly good as a line of best fit for part C. And then finally part D, use your line of best fit to estimate the acceleration for a car with a capacity of 1750. So 1750 is there. Draw the line up to your graph and then horizontally across from the line of best fit. So you can see that that's going to be just one square below eight, which is going to be 7.8 seconds. So in all of those questions, when you draw in the line of blessed fit, you had to plot the mean point first. If on your exam paper, they don't give you the means, they're not expecting you to do that, you would just draw your line of best fit by eye so that the slope that you're going through is pretty much the same as the slope that the crosses are marked on, like that. <laughs>